Another type of logic statement that we want want to review is the by conditional statement. And this is um, often referred to in math as the if and only if statement. So the by conditional statement or the if and only if statement. It's a pretty powerful statement. It ties together both parts of what we're saying. So one can only happen if the other happens and vice versa. A short way of writing this is an I with two F's. Or we can use the symbol of double arrows, right? And notice we have by conditional, the if and only st if statements, we write it with an I and two F's or an arrow with two sides. And it can work this way. A tr we could say a triangle has three congruent or equal sides if and only if the triangle is equilateral. Oops, equilateral. So here, um, this is our Q. The triangle is equilateral. And our P is the triangle has three congruent equal sides. Right? If and only if the triangle is, a, is equilateral. And the reverse is true. The triangle is equilateral only if, right, a triangle has three congruent sides. So we actually read that both ways. So we first we say the first condition, P then Q, right? And then we reverse that and say Q then P. So it's, it's biconditional because it has two conditional statements in it. First P, then Q. Okay, reverse it. First Q, then P. It goes both ways here. And um, we can evaluate the truthfulness, truthfulness of this statement by saying, well, the only time that this whole statement is true is if each side of the bicondition are actually the same. So here we have P and Q. Well, if P and Q are both true, that makes sense, right? A triangle has three congruent sides, if and only if the triangle is equilateral. Okay, so in that case, our statement is true. What if the first part was false and the second part was true? <clears throat> well, if a triangle does not have three congruent sides, or a triangle does not have three congruent sides if and only if the triangle is equilateral. Well, that's that's not a true statement, right? Because if the triangle is equilateral, then it should uh, ha have three congruent sides. So this is false. In the reverse, if we have a true and false, it's still false. Well. All that's saying is if we say a triangle has three congruent sides, if and only if the triangle is not equilateral, it doesn't make sense because the triangle is equilateral when it has three congruent sides. The only other time we get a truth out of a, a biconditional is when both statements are false. And just think about that for a moment. Well, a triangle does not have three congruent sides if and only if the triangle is not equilateral. Well, that's true, right? The only time we have a triangle that does not have three congruent sides is when it is not equilateral. So that's also true. So when you're looking at these statements, just be aware the only time a biconditional is true is when both P and Q are both either true or false. And if we're not convinced of this, we can look at this statement right here. Right, The biconditional goes both ways. So if we start with P and Q, and we start with our standard values, true, false, or true, 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 false, false, true, and false, false. Well, again, we we're eventually trying to work our way over to P if and only if Q. And we know already that we're only going to get truth, true statements when both P and Q are true or false, but let's work there. This statement, again, is a breakdown saying, well, if P, then Q and if Q, then P, right? It's really two conditional statements saying, well, the first P implies Q, and Q has also implied P. <coughs> well, 
how do we again go back p then q when is this true well it's true in the first case and but not in the second or the last right so here it's true oops sorry it's only true it's only false in this case right here if we think back to earlier examples if the first part of our conditional statement is true and the second is false that shouldn't happen right um, we 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 have the second condition depend on the first so it's really a false statement here this is true because when we start off with a false assumption then what follows could be anything for any reason so anything could happen and they're both true if we reverse this we'll get almost the exact same picture here we start with Q and then go to P, so that's true. Here, this is also true because we start with Q, which is false, and finish with P. And then here, this is false, right? Because you start with a, a true Q and end with a false P. And here, this is also true because we start with something false and then anything can follow from that. So now you notice that this is actually the um, conjunction of these two. And here we can just directly see that true and true gives a true. A false and true gives a false. A true and a false gives a false, and a true and a true gives a true. So this actually, we're saying, makes sense. All right, hope that helps.